Hello and welcome everyone. It is 1130 Central, so we will get started. Thank you for tuning in to today's webinar, Activities and Resources for Teaching Sports Medicine Skills. My name is Emily and I will be your moderator today. Presenting today, we have Denise Dubois. She is one of our product managers here at RealityWorks. Denise has been with RealityWorks for a little over 10 years and she is a frequent presenter, trainer, and blogger for all things related to family and consumer science, health science, EMS, and human services. Denise has experience teaching in Wisconsin and in Minnesota. She has over 20 years of education, marketing experience, and professional development. She is also a current member of the Executive Council of NCHSE, so she is a fantastic resource for today's webinar. Before we do get started, I wanted to cover a couple things. First, today's presentation is being recorded and all attendees will receive a link to that recording as well as a copy of the PowerPoint slides and the handouts that Denise will be going over. You will also receive a certificate of completion for attending today's presentation. Please look out for that in your email within 24 hours after the webinar. We will have time at the end for a Q&A session. So if you have any questions, please feel free to type those in the chat area or the Q&A section located at the bottom of your screen. With that being said, I'm gonna pass things over to Denise to get us going. Thank you, Emily, and welcome to our session, everyone. Today, we're going to spend a little bit of time uh, sharing resources that can be used to teach soft skills as well as those technical skills needed by sports medicine professionals. We know that now is a really uncertain time as far as the type of environment you may find yourself teaching in this fall, whether it be in-person, hybrid, or remote. So most of the, the ideas and the um, resources shared can be adapted for, for most of those environments. So let's go ahead and let's get started. So we're gonna kick it off first with a discussion of soft skills needed by sports medicine professionals. And we're actually gonna share two scenarios that you can use with students in your own programs. So first of all, here are a few of the qualities that a good sports medicine professional will possess. Things like self-confidence, communication, empathy um, are used every day in those types of jobs. So why do soft skills matter? Well, there are tons and tons of research studies that show the benefit of soft skills and why they matter. And we chose just a few to highlight and share with you today. There was a 2013 study by Millennial Branding that showed that 61% of managers and 65% of Gen Y hires believe that soft skills are the most important ones you can have in the workplace. Another poll conducted by CNBC revealed that 44% of employers chose soft skills as the biggest gap in the US workforce. And then another one conducted by Harvard University said concluded that 85% of job success comes from having well-developed soft skills and people skills. And only about 15% of the job success really comes from the knowledge of those, those technical skills. So I find those statistics to be very compelling and very interesting. So we know that health science has used or harnessed the power of scenario-based learning for years to help teach key soft skills and also technical skills. Now, sometimes your scenario could include the use of something like a simulator or a hands-on resource. Now here on the screen, you see uh, two different examples of different ways to learn soft skills using simulators and scenarios. So the photo on the left just happens to show a blood pressure simulator on a standardized patient. So you could create any scenario you wanted, having one student be the sports medicine professional, actually taking the blood pressure and, or learning how to do that, and the other a specific type of patient, and then students can switch roles. Now, the added benefit of wearable simulators such as this is that the students also practice soft skills of patient communication. Now, on the right-hand side, you can see a, our closed fracture trauma mannequin, and of course, that can be used in a wide variety of scenarios to teach and practice all sorts of basic sports medicine skills. Well, you could set up a scenario with students working as an athletic trainer and then have them role play also um, practicing some of their soft skills. And there are many benefits to scenario-based learning, whether it be for those technical or soft skills. And here's just a few I like to highlight. First of all, it creates sticky learning experiences. It's gonna give your students something they're gonna remember. Um, it's gonna facilitate problem solving in learners. So it puts your students in those new and different situations. It provides guided exploration for learners. So you'll be giving students explicit, thoughtful, critical thinking opportunities. It provides a safe practice zone to gain proficiency and mastery. So there's no fear of consequences. It allows your learners to make mistakes, but through feedback, 
reinforce the right approach. So now is the time for your students to get that practice so they'll know what to do when they come across situations like this in real life on the job. We want to help build your students' toolkit of responses and approaches. So one very simple yet effective way to help students learn a variety of soft skills are with something like our, our pathway-specific scenario cards written by subject matter experts. We have a set for uh, sports medicine professionals, and each card um, focuses on a different soft skill, and there's 19 in the deck. Each scenario also includes things like points of view to consider and some key discussion questions. Uh, we also have, in addition to sports medicine, we have medical assistant, nursing, geriatric, and EMT scenarios. But we're going to share two of our scenarios from our sports medicine uh, card deck that you can use immediately in your classes, whether it be online and remote or in person. And this is part of what you'll be getting after the, the webinar today in your follow-up email. So first of all, let's take a look, look at our teamwork one. And we know scenarios are a good way to get your students to interact with each other, but also the content. So this one focusing on teamwork would be a perfect way um, to use it in a health occupations career exploration lesson also. Now, sometimes it can be fun to have your students try their acting skills. So in, in the teamwork scenario above, you could assign the students the different roles of the person in the scenario, or and actually have them act it out in front of class and then after the scene is done, you could then ask them the key questions on the back to generate class-wide discussions. If you use something like this online, you could have your students role play being you know, perhaps the physical therapist and then use a family member as or um, to be the other actor. They could record it on their phone, which they love to use, and they could submit it to you with answers to those discussion questions. So again, it's something very simple, but very easy and flexible to use. Now, here's an example of one from the card deck that's on time management that you'll also be able to use in your class. And you could um, use something like this remotely. You could scan it and share it in an LMS system, or you could even create a brief recording of yourself reading the scenario. And then you could put those questions out on a discussion forum for your students to weigh in on. Again, extremely flexible and easy to use. So here are just two of them that you can, you can go ahead and try on your own. But, um, of course, there are many ways to create short scenarios like this, but you don't have to do it all yourself. So here's some ideas for you on creating scenarios. First of all, get your industry involved, especially in your local community. Uh, many of you may already use things like advisory boards that you tap into for various uh, CTE programs. So you could talk to local employers in your area also. Uh, tell them you're creating a class project. You need help coming up with some real world scenarios that perhaps involve different soft skills. Ask them about recent scenarios that they may have experienced on the job. You can also get your students to write them and they love this. Uh, many of your students are now in their first jobs themselves and are, uh, have some work experiences and scenarios that they may be able to share as well. Um, also talk to your colleagues. More than ever, we know that schools and programs are tapping into people with um, health, health uh, business or industry experience to teach. So if you know of some fellow teachers in your school or district that have worked in healthcare, perhaps you could go to them and ask them for a few ideas for scenarios as well. And of course, family is a great source as well. We Many of us have family members um, related to career fields that we teach in. You could also ask family members to share scenarios or situations they've maybe been a part of or seen. But if all else fails, you can Google it. Uh, keyword searches such as uh, work role playing, soft skill scenarios, workforce scenarios uh, will uh, bring forth dozens of things that are ready to use that um, you might consider for your own classes. For example, um, videos, they're a great way to get your students actively engaged in problem solving and critical thinking. And all it takes is a few keyword searches in YouTube and you'll find dozens of videos on a variety of soft skills in the workplace. Now, they may not all be specific health care related. They may be more general, but I just did a really quick keyword search and came up with the four that you see here on the screen just by um, doing, you know, workforce scenarios, soft skill scenarios. Many of them are very short. They can be very engaging where you, you show it, you stop it, you discuss, you uh, post to students, what would you do if, and uh, students love things like that. Uh, if you knew of the link on YouTube, you could also upload the link to an LMS system and you could deliver some of this content online to share. But um, there's lots and lots of things to be found on YouTube that are ready to use. But of course, you'd, you'd wanna view them ahead to 
make sure the content is what you're looking for. So that's just a few ideas for weaving some soft skill instruction in. Now we're gonna share some uh, resources and ideas for teaching sports medicine technical skills. So the first thing we like to share before we go on is an access site for you and it's on your, your uh, screen in front of you. You'll also be getting this on the handout after the webinar. But um, this is a, a link to all of our curricula, including lesson plans, assessments, handouts for students, um, and, and uh, product guides that go with all of our health science products. So you click on there and then you go to health science. And then as you click on the different uh, product, whether it be a mannequin, a task trainer or moulage, um, the curriculum related to that product will be available at that link. We have also further made any of the student handouts um, Google Classroom friendly. So you'll find Google Doc versions of handouts at this link as well. So there are hundreds and hundreds of pages of curricula and activities that are ready to use and available to you. So if you use this link, uh, one thing you might wanna do is save it as a favorite and then you can just go back to it. So um, many of the things I'm gonna be referring to on uh, subsequent slides um, can be accessed at this link. So I just wanted to point that out before we, we went any further. So let's talk about blood pressure. So here's an idea. Maybe this you could think of for remote learning. Uh, this handout that you see on the screen is from our blood pressure simulator curriculum. Now it's available via the link I shared. And one activity you could do from that is you could take, there's a procedures checklist and you could take that list, you maybe type it into a Word doc and scramble the order, challenge your students to putting them back together in the correct order. Now in Google Docs, you could even set this up so that each step has a correct number associated with it and it could be even auto graded. Now we know that hands-on practice is necessary for something like blood pressure, but if we're looking for additional content to um, give students while they're remote, um, this is something you could do until you can get them back in a skills lab. So just, just one thing to consider. Now, there are also other online resources that I've been able to find. First of all, the link that you see up there, that's for an online self-test. That includes audio files for blood pressure, as well as uh, knowledge questions, and it also has an answer key. The second link um, is an audio recording of the crowd of uh, sounds that students can listen to. They have to have headphones on, but they can learn to discern um, the, all of the different sounds in something like that. Now, bandaging and wound care mannequins, if you have one of those, uh, it provides a lot of hands-on practice, of course, in class. But if you're remote or hybrid, one activity you could do um, that uh, you could get from the curriculum that comes with our bandaging and wound care mannequin, it's called the dry sterile dressing skills checkoff. Uh, you could take that, you could prepare a, li a lecture live or recorded using the PowerPoints and notes and the lessons, and there's extensive things in that lesson you can use. Then your students could practice. So for at-home practice, they would need to have access to a dry sterile dressing. Uh, because that's something like that is low cost, maybe you could prepare student dressing kits for at-home practice that you could send home. Students could practice on family members, they could record their dry sterile dressing practice, and then they could submit it to you. Another thing you can do is find videos that specifically address bandaging or wound care for sports medicine. And here are just a few that I found. There's, there's really a lot out there. Um, if students are able to access bandages at home, they could practice on family members, or again, you could maybe um, put together a low cost kit that you could send out with them. Again, all of these things, of course, can be done in person if you're, if you're fortunate enough to be in that learning environment. Uh, these two specific videos, very short, less than three minutes, but very on point uh, for specific types of bandaging and wound care. So there's lots out there, just uh, showing a few that I was able to find quickly. Taping and wrapping skills, of course, you need hands-on practice for that as well. Now, there are many good videos that can introduce your students and model good taping and wrapping techniques. And here are, again, just a few shorter ones that I found after a brief search on YouTube. You could, if you're in class, you could show these in class. You could share the URL in an LMS system with remote learning of students if they're hybrid, but they could watch the video. You'd want to you know, preview it to make sure it's, uh, it's a good quality and follows the steps that you would want to. And then you would, of course, um, be able to have your students do the practice thereafter. But there's, there's many good videos out there that your students can have access to.
again, hitting on the, the strength of scenario-based learning or case studies, they're a really good way to get your students to critically think and a problem solve real world issues. So here's a sample scenario from one of our taping and wrapping skill sim kits that you could try in your classroom. You could introduce ankle taping with a video like one of the ones I just shared. Then you could have your students pair up. One could be the athlete, one may be the athletic trainer. Then you can role play the scenario and actually practice an ankle tape procedure. Then you could have your students switch roles. Now you could just provide the scenario and you could have them identify the proper technique have them identify the supplies they think they'd need, and then they'd have to articulate their reason for uh, choosing that technique. So there's a lot of ways, again, that you could use something like a very brief scenario to do that kind of thing in class or even remote. Now, splinting and bracing. Um, the link above, that um, it's on the bottom of the screen there, gives you access to two free lessons from our introduction to immobilization and splinting techniques, which is from our splints and braces supply pack. One of the lessons is on joint and long bone immobilization, and one is specific to spinal immobilization. But both of these lessons start with a brief pre quiz. Again, you give that again at the end. Um, there's an empathy scenario that's built into the, le the lesson because we want to have students explicitly learn and weave in soft skill instruction into our lessons. Then there's a whole lecture in PowerPoint about different techniques on splinting and bracing. And then you've got part of the lesson where it's the practice and the skills assessment. And all of that is available at the link um, above. And there's um, bits and pieces you can take from it that could certainly be used um, for remote or hybrid learning if you're not in class. So first aid, we find many, many free resources online that can be accessed and used in programs uh, focused on icebreaker activities, uh, short wrap up exercises, or just getting your students to interact. So the first link here is a set of a free set of 59 online flashcards for sport specific to sports medicine first aid. And then the second one is uh, access to several free games online. Um, first aid games can be a powerful educational tool to help teach um, athletes injury prevention practices in a way that will keep them engaged and willing to learn. So um, some of these uh, first aid games um, on this link include an arm sling relay, bandage relay, there's first aid uh, baseball and bingo, there's a first aid relay, there's flashcards, there's other scenarios, there's a stretcher relay, so a lot of fun things, but uh, again, oh, get your students engaged and enjoying while they're learning. Now let's talk airway skills. Sports medicine professionals such as athletic trainers need to have some airway management skills for emergencies. Um, there are many free assets available with some good information for students if you look. The video highlighted above is a specific airway management uh, considerations for athletic trainers. That's the content. It's approximately one hour. However, um, I think it, it, I, I thought it was quite good. Again, look in YouTube. Uh, under airway, BVM, things like that. And um, there are also several free airway management apps available that your students might find valuable as well. Some are free, some are low cost. And I just put two different ones up there. One was the difficult airway app and the other is airway management beyond the basics. Uh, there may be more out there. Uh, you can uh, take a look at that, but just trying to think outside the box, what could I, uh, what kind of access uh, what resources are available for these different types of skills that I could put in my students' hands. Um, big valve mask ventilation skills uh, sh should also be taught, of course, and you can find, find a free lesson which comes with our BVM ventilation trainer at the link above. If, you, um, if you're looking for hands-on practice, of course, it's great to be able to access things like our, our hands-on trainer. Um, but this lesson that you have access to comes with a pre and post quiz two different introductory activities. It also has a lecture and slide presentation. It involves skills practice and then an assessment checkoff at the end to ensure that students have learned the proper procedure. So I just put a few snapshots from that lesson um, on the screen so you can see the types of things. There are, of course, the bag valve mask checkoff of skills so that students are learning the right, the right order. Um, again, we're weaving in empathy activities. So there's that, that communication, uh, the anatomy pre-quiz so they know the parts um, of the anatomy that they need to in order to understand BVM ventilation. And then I just took a brief snapshot of some of the, some of the slides that are available. 
but you don't have to reinvent the wheel. We've got a lot of things here that you could that you could use. So let's look at AED. Uh, on the link that you see on the screen in front of you, this is the lesson that comes with our AED trainer. And even if you don't have access to our trainer um, in this lesson, again, you have a pre and post quiz. And then the lesson goes into cardiac arrest and an AED empathy scenario. Uh, and then there's uh, slides, there's lecture notes, there's demos you can do. And then there's the student practice and skills checkoff section for these types of skills. So as we know, many of most of these skills are going to be on certifications that uh, students need to master in order to get that certification, um, certainly for EMTs, um, for athletic trainers. So we want to be able to uh, give them as much information, whether it be written or hands on as we can. Now let's talk anatomical models. We know that anat and physiology are prerequisite courses for sports medicine pathways. So um, on the picture in front of you is a joint model set that we happen to have that teaches about common sports injuries that are seen in high school and college. We're gonna share some more free resources and ideas we had all about joint models. So if you had a joint model, like the ones in the, in the um, picture on the previous slide, you could use it to create your own anatomical tutorial, or you could even use one that's already prepared, such as the one in the first link. There's a knee joint um, anatomy tutorial at that link that, that you could use instead of creating your own. Now, there's also some free resources for 3D joint models that show muscular structure and give really terrific uh, views of common sports injuries, uh, such as the one above um, from Visible Body um, that, that uh, had Common Sports Injuries 101, I thought also was a very helpful video that, that you could access. You could also show uh, videos that showcase specific sports injuries if you're teaching about that. And I found a couple here, again, after a short search. One was on FOM five common sports injuries. Well, I guess they're both on FOM five common sports injuries, but two different videos, um, relatively short in length, but very uh, to the point. Um, here's some, also some other free lesson resources on joints that you might find useful. Uh, one thing I found was an online textbook at this link, and uh, it has great background information on joints and also has really good illustrations. So I picked that one. Also, I found a, a game called Movable Joint Charades at the link that you see uh, listed near the bottom. And this is a free activity where uh, students are learning about joints um, and, and things like that well, well, kind of in a game environment. But um, I also found a, a more lesson plans on Lesson Planet, Teachers Paying Teachers, and ShareMyLesson.com uh, also had things specific to joints, joints and bones. Uh, 3D animations, boy, as have, we got some cool things out there that are free to access. Um, there, here's three that I found. The first one was all about how different joints work. Then there was one specific to uh, knee joint animation. And then the last one's just human skeleton and different joints. But if you've never looked for a specific for 3D animations, I think you might be really surprised at what you find out there. And so those are just three that I've captured. And um, you'll be given, you'll be uh, sent a master list at the end of the presentation today of all of these links, but uh, YouTube is just a wealth. Um, how about some free and low cost uh, nat and physiology apps? Here's a short list of ones that I found that you might want to consider that Essential Skeleton has a 3D um, anatomy atlas. You can rotate the skeleton, you can look even to individual bones. Uh, it will give you correct pronunciations. Um, uh, there's quizzes, all sorts of things. Um, the visual anatomy contains all body anatomy systems. They have more than 500 images with descriptions and labels. They have built-in quizzes. The 3D4 medical images and animations have 400 high-resolution images. They have 40 videos, full descriptions, and so forth. You have searching capability on that site. Um, the Anat and Physiology um, um, offers both Anat and Physiology teachers in organized structured manner. Um, it comes with study tools with a practice manager and gamified system for students. Um, there's something called the Cell Atlas um, app, which has extensive cell images and mini lectures. Uh, one I have up there is called Netter's Anatomy. There's a free version that contains 14 different um, visual plates from the fifth edition of the Atlas of the Human Anatomy. Uh, Physiology Animations, there's a free version of that app that contains 
11 animations with videos. So just a lot out there if you have never considered the apps or the app world. So I just wanted to point out the short list of ones that I found most specifically related to sports medicine. Now, coming soon, we have several new products specifically developed for sports medicine instructors and students that are going to be launched this fall. So um, today on today's webinar, we are going to give you a sneak peek at um, what some of these new sports medicine products are going to be. First of all, we have a taping and wrapping skills sim kit, and this is going to have um, a series of different lessons uh, teaching you how to identify um, and uh, and use different taping, wrapping, and bracing products. Um, you're gonna uh, get hands-on uh, practice with being able to not only uh, use a variety of these procedures, but you're gonna have the tape, taping and wrapping things in the kit with the scenarios. So it's an all-in-one class kit with lots of stuff in it. Um, there's a rehabilitation and modalities scenarios kit. And this is a kit that will include uh, curriculum all about eight different types of modalities. You're gonna learn um, there's a flashcard set that's going to talk about safety procedures and um, description of each modality. But the, one of the highlights of this one is it's going to come with an acute injury scenario workbook set where students are given uh, 25 acute injury scenarios and they are uh, challenged with creating treatment plans for those scenarios. Now we also have a sports nutrition lab kit that highlights nutrients, nutrition, body weight and composition, body fat percentage, pregame meal planning, food labels and more. But this is kind of a lab activity kit where they're gonna have hands-on labs where they have to do meal planning. Um, they learn about banned substances, creating brochures. They have food label activities. They're gonna have to do a body, per body uh, percentage of body fat calculations and things. Um, so you get the things in the kit that you need to do um, for the labs. So that one's kind of a fun one. We also have one that's a very unique kit called the Environmental Factors Impacting Sports Injuries Lab Kit. So this one will include lessons on uh, atmospheric conditions that contribute to environmental injuries, uh, environmental factors to be considered when caring for athletes, um, uh, circadian, uh, dis, circadian rhythm or dysrhythmia and the impact on athletes, how to develop an emergency action plan and policy for thunder and lightning as it relates to athletics. Um, they're going to get sun exposure and risks to athletes, but for all of those lessons, they're going to get lab activities um, where they're sometimes uh, using things like um, wet bulb globe temperature heat or heat stress meters to check um, environmental things. So very engaging about a very unique kit, but of utmost importance to sports medicine. We've got a concussion education kit. This is a simulation experience where you have concussion simulation glasses and, and headphones that uh, have some kind of, it almost is like a dementia, tinnitus kind of blended sound where students put on the glasses and the headphones and then they, they have to do 10 different uh, simulated activities where they're, it feels like they're actually having a concussion. So they see what that's like physically, but you're also getting posters about the anatomy of a brain during concussion and things like that. You're also getting a brain a model, anatomical model to use in your in your lesson. So all five of these are coming out this fall, but wait, there is more. Um, we also have some free webinars that um, we wanna talk about like today's webinar. We have um, every month, we've got free webinars that you can sign up for. If you can't attend, you can certainly still get the link and watch, but um, they're on a variety of health science topics, not just sports medicine, but certainly some that will relate to sports medicine. So um, don't forget to go to the link that you see and sign up for those webinars. Uh, just two other new products I wanna point out for sports medicine this fall, um, for more for general health science are two online courses that we've got featured. One is developing clinical empathy for effective patient-focused care. And the other one is a very robust ethical and legal issues in healthcare. And that's gonna be um, both in online format and also in a print-based program. So you can also be watching for those two exciting new products as well. Few more resources to point out before we open it up for Q&A. Uh, we have a very active RealityWorks blog that we invite uh, guest writers to. Uh, we do product launches there. We do uh, classroom 
ideas, teaching ideas and so forth. So a great place to reach out for, for new information and just to be engaged with us on the blog. We also try to be very active in our uh, social media accounts like Facebook and Twitter. You'll see many teachers out on there sharing not only uh, pictures, but ideas for how they're using uh, some of these, uh, some of our resources in the classroom. So great places to go. Wanted to make sure that you were aware that those existed. Now I know I've thrown a lot of information out in the last half hour, but at this time I'd like to open it up for any Q and A. And now I don't know that uh, Emily has been watching the chat box for any questions. So if you have any about anything we've covered today, uh, please type them in the chat and we'll do our best to answer your questions. Hey, Denise, we got a couple questions while you were presenting. Do you wanna go over everything that they will be getting in the post webinar email? Yeah, today you will be getting um, the slide presentation that we shared today. So you'll see all of those links again in the notes. Um, you will be getting a participant, uh, certificate of participation if you were part of our live audience um, for everybody whether you were live or watching this uh, after the fact you will be getting um, access to the the links in the presentation um, you will also be getting the two soft skill scenarios that we shared today as well as a master handout with all of the links to try to make it easy for you to find the things that I spoke about today Perfect. And then Denise, regarding the new products that are coming out, where can they find information on that when it's available? These we will have on our website in October of this year. Uh, we will also be doing some marketing campaigns. So if you're on our email uh, list, you will most certainly be getting those, those launch announcements. But if you're curious and want more information on those specific products, we will be creating sp uh, specific pages on our website for each of those products. And a lot of the information will include all of the parts and pieces. We give a curriculum overview so that you have information about all of the lessons that are taught and the topics. Uh, we do standards alignments and things like that. So there will be a lot of information coming out uh, roughly beginning of October. Perfect. And then just one last question, the links from today's webinar, um, Somebody is just wondering if those will be emailed and those will be emailed out. You should see them in your email within 24 hours after this presentation. So definitely check your spam mail if you don't see it in your inbox. And then Denise, I think that is all the questions for today. Well, thank you again for everybody for participating in our, in our sports medicine skills webinar. Um, it's not often that we're, we do a specific uh, pathway webinars. And we know that sports medicine is an area that seems to really be growing, especially in our high schools. So we wanted to be able to share as much resources and information that we had, because we know as we go into a new school year, uh, it's, it's tricky, whether you're in person or remote. Um, so we hope that you found this uh, valuable and that you'll be able to take a few things from this and try them in your program. So thank you very much for your, for your attendance. We really appreciate it. Hey, Denise, we had one more question come in regarding pricing on the new products. Um, do you want to go over where they can find that once it's available? Yeah, if you go into our uh, realityworks.com and you'll see a, a button that says products and under health science, there will be anything new for sports medicine will be listed under there and pricing will be included on, on all the product pages. Perfect. And I just I'm sending that link in the chat now. All right. Fantastic. Em, if there's no more questions, we'll conclude today's webinar. That's it. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in today and have a great rest of your day.